Lord, you go ahead and worship him. You can worship him with something stronger than his song. Go ahead and worship him. You can adopt your own words to acknowledge who you have discovered him to be. We bless your name, Jesus. We hallow your name, Jesus. We acknowledge your goodness. We acknowledge your greatness. We acknowledge your constancy. Epotole seme foponataria febota. Bantos kepa boratale sambe boko babai. Ebembro so ve pate kamebi o so tababaya. Ipo kabe sabentoria. Reko zateme kovia pakande. Soi tabamate. Yes, we exalt your name. You are high and lifted up. We bow in acknowledgement of your goodness. In the acknowledgement of your greatness. You are good. You are kind. Ebo Korea Sambi Bekaba. Bayato Samo. Bayate Babo Bekata. Sambi Beteli Bekoya. Saibe Berosko Bataba. Bay Kamba Baboma. Bay Besome Sevate Baboyata. Ibresto Ve Pelato Saba. Who is like unto the old God. Among the gods who is like unto him. You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises. You are doing wonders. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Yeah. 
Writing exams have had it um, better than they expected. And then, um, in case you experienced otherwise, it will still come out good. Yeah. 
It's one of the reasons why we encourage people to study. Because writing well is not the only thing that God rewards. Studying well too has its rewards. You've not paid attention to it. Sometimes you read very well, you forget, but you still don't fail. It's because your deliberate study gives God an opportunity to work with something. Are you with me? So, please, those who preach, you know that there are times when you go to preach, you prepare very well, delivery is bad, but impact is still strong. And the general, um, the general thing that we say is, oh no, God just took it over. Yes, he did. But if you, in sustained fashion, do not live a studious, prayerful life, you find out that those spontaneous movements of God will fade because you have not been registered in labor. The Bible says in all labor, there is profit. All, all. Somebody say all. all. So if you study well, even if you forget, there is a profit that still comes because you studied well. God give you understanding, no? Okay, so you have the questions? Good. So, um, so that we'll not exceed our 40 minutes because we're two minutes into it already. Um, let's have one of the pastors run our questions. I would have loved to teach before the questions. <clears throat> In that way, it's possible that some of the questions will find their answers in my teaching but since I know what I'm supposed to teach if your question is in the teaching um, I hope it's not cold okay, no so where's blessing get me one that's not cold thank you alright so who's coordinating ok so let them be on both screens, front and back, so that everybody can see through them. So it means we have um, invariably 38 minutes for this session. Then I'll share on two things that I see as foundations for surviving famines. It's a series I'll run for a couple of Tuesdays since the famine will last a little bit long. So it's good. All right, let's go. You can read. You can read now. I am a lecturer in a tertiary institution and I own a house that's far away from work. With the recent hike in fuel prices, it has become harder to consistently drive to work. Age and physical constraints prevent me from taking public transport. How do I remain faithful at work and survive with this growing Austerities. Austerities. Okay, so um, the first thing I want us to understand is that there is no trial, no test, no temptation that comes to us that is not common to man. Are you with me? So leave the question up a little. One of the things you find out with this question is that there's a peculiarity. The peculiarity is built into age, thank you Holy Spirit, is built into physical constraints um, that may not give room for public transport. If you go to Abuja in the evening, you find out that um, even though some of them end up being one chance, most people work around those federal establishments don't drive home alone in the evening. One of the things they do is to synergize with people so that you have four or five people who stay in the same area, all of them contributing to fuel only one vehicle. 
Are you with me? So they drive to work together. They drive back home together. Some who don't have that privilege, what they end up doing, what they end up doing is to, you know, transmit or transit people for a fee. One of the things that we need to see established in these times, and I was sharing this with my other brother a few days ago, one of God's greatest gifts, one of God's greatest gates of expression in the earth realm is man. It means that many of your spiritual solutions, even for spiritual problems, will be solved God using men. If all of your interventions are built into the spectacular supernatural, something is wrong. Heaven, even the heavens, Psalm 5 or 16, belong to the Lord, the earth he has given to the children of men. We are the administrators of God's enterprise in the earth. Are you with me? There will be more people that will be healed because somebody said be healed than the Holy Spirit just moved in quietly and healed people. There will be more people that will be financially helped by men than sudden appearances of alerts in your bank account. Are you with me? There are more children that are born by women or by the union of a man and a woman than there will ever be by immaculate conception. It means God's greatest tool in the earth realm for surviving any season, for achieving any dimension of his enterprise is what? Man. So when the times become like this, relationship becomes a bailout. So that the one who is asking the question may not even need to drive, may not even need to contribute to fuel, may actually by relationship experience being picked up in his house, taken to work, or that he only drives a short distance, a junction. But one other thing we need to know is that because man is God's most used gate of expression in the earth, the day this problem showed up, a help was close by. And so one of the prayers to pray would be, Lord, open my eyes to see who you have given to me for this season. Not everybody is breathing under hostile conditions. There's somebody around him or her who can drive him to work and bring him back. Sometimes he may not be under lecturer, he may be a student. Sometimes it may not be somebody who works in the university. It may just be somebody who is going to drop his or her children. Or we call them along vehicles. There's help. Remember that there was a woman who was thirsty, whose ch child was thirsty. Hagar Ishmael. The angel did not create water. The angel of the Lord said, see water. It means while they were weeping, God ensured that where they stopped was in proximity to a pool. But their anguish did not give them sight. Yoruba Sukun in Yamarina is difficult. So, what to do is to step away from the situation and ask the Lord. What human provision have you made? What relationships do I need to service? You have two yams. Two yams can pay for your transport for a month. Especially if you give two yams to someone like me. Because I don't like owing people. So, ah! What do you mean? So even if I want to drive past, on the strength of your two yams, I can be carrying you every day. For me, it's as simple as, if you greet me, I owe you. 
and I'll keep it in my heart. For the day that God gives me room to be good to you. And if somebody says, why are you being good to that person? The guy greeted me. Or somebody that looked like him greeted me. Is praise in church? No, I'll close with that. I was in, which airport was that now? As I flew to the east or so, before this portal court, okay. What was that my Anambra trip? When I came down in the plane, there was a lady that was trying to carry bags and all of that. I was quick to want to help. And then I greeted friend with the person until I held back to say, what's wrong with you? What about this person? She's not my wife's friend. I don't know you from anywhere. So when we were collecting our bags, I stood on the other side of the, the trolley so that we will not talk again. And I started asking the Lord why. And I found out that she looks exactly like praise. I did not cause elder sister. That's blessing. Blessing is my daughter. She's not in the country. We've spoken for so long. So it's normal that father misses his daughter. Somebody looks like daughter. He's almost relating to that person like his daughter. So I picked my phone. Uh, daughter, how are you? So I'm fine. So I just helped somebody like you look like you here. And I moved on. No names, no phone numbers. I'm good. So relationships are everything here. It's a currency that is stronger than money. Our prayer to God is that God will bring help in the shape of a man in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have you learned something? So when you have 10 cups of rice, give somebody one. Because you can of rice and no salt. Then you understand how to eat rice without salt. Which one is more expensive? Which one is more expensive? Okay. One of the things that happens in a famine is that there is a redistribution of wealth. What everybody has begins to become valuable. So one of the systems of transaction is we exit currencies and then we trade what we have. So two parents, same school, I need to dash out. We will close at five. I need to dash out at work, from work. Horrible. We live beside ourselves. I have a gate man. When they wake up in the morning, their car is washed. I'm buying favor. So that when they are coming from school, let's bring his son from school. Partnerships. Give your stand. It may be as little as going out to pull your cloth from the line and pull his cloth from the line. And when he comes, you go to him in the night. It was almost raining. The next question from him may be, have you eaten? So I'm even thinking, ah, say take rice. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Amen. All right. You want to say something? Okay. Uh, the second question. So in case he needs more, now in case there are physical conditions like ailment, please let the person who asks that question see Pastor Dola. Pastor Dola has a word from the Lord for your condition. Because, no, no, you are the only ones that are laughing. He will pray with you and we trust God that whatever physical stress is in place, his utterances from Jesus will put an end to it. Amen. All right, so question okay. two. Please, sir, how can, I, how can a student who is not working and whose parents are not rich survive the famine period? Okay. Many times when the famine season comes, one of the things God does, and okay, I'll get to it when I'm doing my thing, is that God begins to give things of business around here now for those who are not too or who have not exposed their hearts to the season is that you want to be selling something right 
and you think if your parents don't have money, if your parents don't have, um, or you don't have money, you don't have a job that brings in money, you cannot sell. Every man has a marketable substance. Every man. In a few Sundays, we are going to, by the anointing, put pressure on what is on you. But I want to give you like two weeks to do what God has given you that can be monetized in this season. I'm not going to introduce some of the things, but some of you are doing the things already. Some of you are doing it. Like Pastor Jolan knows. Don't look back. I, I don't even think you are the only one. Did Timothy do? You didn't tell him. Did you me do? Did he do? do? What of Lamide? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in their world, animals make money. Keep it that way. Okay, you understand what I'm saying now? They didn't have to steal. They didn't have to pack dog poo. They just needed to be on telegram. Now, that thing was not up last year. It was up now. Am I saying, oh, everybody go to telegram and be doing stuff? You'll find out that for some of you, when you hear those things, your heart doesn't go out to it. Stay back. Let it shall not be that you are laid back. But a lot of services. Some of you used to write for free. It can be monetized. Some of you used to talk for free. It can be monetized. Yes. Some of you really make sense when you talk. It's not everybody. I don't know laughing. I hope you know that making people laugh is a lot of money. So if I monetized that thing I said now, I made a lot of money. So you need to look in words to find out what makes you unique. God's gift of unique reality is found, found but it's also something that is supposed to be a currency of survival so if I gather about three four people together now we do a song we go to the studio maybe we put it on YouTube for example to trend God gives me good songs so we sing I can share we can all of us can share the money and then make more money the collaborations that can happen in this season that don't even require money. Are you with me? There are also favors. Everybody is a creature of favor. What I mean by that is that you're created to receive favor and you're created to give favor. And favor once can open a permanent door. I'll share with you a plea I was going to raise yesterday night. I told you now. Was it this one I sent to you? When you sent something to me on WhatsApp, you sent me a document. And I said I was going to raise a plea. I didn't make that demand for 10 minutes. The response was, we're going to get it done when the time is, when, it, when it's the time. It's favor. It's a whole lot of money that is going to be sorted just like that. But there's no thinking. We're going to get it done. I also have a feeling that there are more doors like that that you open. So, like I said for the first person, intangible things acquire value in famine. You give somebody wisdom. Some of them don't even come early. They don't return early. But over time, something good happens. Are you with me? So sit down. 
everybody must stop. When the seasons change, we must pause motion and now sit with the Lord. Go on a retreat. I don't mean to study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It may be one day of quietness. Lord, what do you want me to do? Money is how our world transacts. How do I get money in this dry season? Well, you don't believe. There's money everywhere. Now, when I walked to the seminary this morning, they are doing ministers' conference, right? So people are some people are selling, right? Many of them will see their businesses boom this week, and it will not happen like that the next year. But it's happening in the midst of a famine. Besides the place, a small shop. So when I get there, I buy water. If I need a drink, that's where I buy. Go into my room, lock up until my flight time. The guy used to sell um, squadron, gem, maybe Jamison or something. All these expensive wine. The guy says plantain chips now. He's smart. Because until you know Mateo, Lord of Paris and me, the number is reducing. Long ago is the time when somebody comes and says, Give everybody. Common sense will tell him, So, some people have been cured of the habit now. That's, that's how strong scarcity is. He has switched product. Imagine walking up to somebody and saying, Why not? Why not? Why not? Business instructions. Life instructions. Those are the those are the gates. So, ask the Lord. You can survive. Money doesn't need to come from home. You can be. look for opportunities to acquire skills. There are many free skill. Um, acquiring platforms that even after like two months you have started hearing something. My wife, I was explaining one small thing to you yesterday. Abby, and it's working. It's not much, it's not like you're making one million or hundred K every day. But if a student masters it and it's not greedy, small, 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 you can survive. At least if you take out feeding fee from it you may still have like a hundred hundred and fifty k on a monthly basis and maybe an average of like 15 minutes per day as busy as i am okay this thing works actually me i even saw it on facebook yeah. and the lord glued my heart to it so i said okay well, let's try now it worked, it worked. So I showed my wife, it's working, it's working, it's working. So, there are things to do. Your startup shop is a retreat. So whisper to your neighbor, go on retreat. Take out a day of quietness, not watching movies, you're not watching TikTok. Stay away from your phones. Phones, in extended usage, they, cure, they, they impact non-creativity. That's the truth. You don't want to be a comedian, but you must watch comedy for 10 hours. And you're still not funny. So these are the things to do. So, in case you're like that, please see Pastor Diola and Pastor Lamde. They sell animals. They can also help you. I hear another animal sale day is September 20th. I have some who do this thing, so I hear them. So, what's today's date? 10. So, you still have 10 days. May God give you understanding. Yeah. All right. At least you used to download messages, have you? From church on Telegram. So, please see them. Okay. All right, sir. In preparing for famine, on behalf of one's family, 
forth slash nation in a foreign land like Joseph, how does one bring it into today's context? And provided one perceives God give a timeline, it is already halved. How does one ensure to meet up, sir? Joseph's foundation, amen, to come into the famine was abundantly instructed. One of the things I find very unique about the communications of God to Joseph is that they did not just come um, as demonstration of words of knowledge. They also came with an accompanying word of wisdom facility. When you look at the children of Issachar, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, you see again that duality of expression. It's the preserver's anointing. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that have the understanding of the times and, sorry, times to know. So their understanding produced a wisdom to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. Amen. So, in case you pick, because there are things that are unique. Not every famine is the same. I was trying to explain that on Sunday. So, for every perceived famine season, there must be a labor into unique wisdoms. Are you with me? So, you perceive there's a timeline it may not even, family farming sometimes is not, is, does not coincide with national farming. It may just be that money that comes into that house will become scarce. If you sense it, you can ask the Lord, what do you do? Sometimes we are behind schedule. They are still catch up mechanisms. If you had asked me this question online, I'll have given you one answer. Sit with the Lord. I cannot overemphasize the need for robust fellowship in adverse seasons. You may not even have, um, you may not even have instructions for 10 days because sometimes God doesn't give advanced knowledge for survival. He gives daily knowledge. Go to that place. I'm there and then you miss something. You're preserved. Go to that place. Imagine God begins to instruct you every day whose house to go to. And you find out that in two weeks, you had a meal, a robust meal every day from 20 houses. After day five, you will stop. We don't move like that. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We are not led by emotions. If it pleases God to see me go from house to house like that to feed, blessed be his holy name. Are you with me? Some, of, some people will survive by asking. So the Lord put somebody in your heart. Sometimes it's as simple as say hello to that person. Some other time is as simple as God putting that name in your heart. And then you pray. And as you pray, an instruction comes. And then you pass that instruction. And God rewards your obedience through that person's pause. I've seen that happen a lot. I'm just minding my business. And then the Lord speaks to me. It's not pastoral. Ah, bro, how far now? How are you doing? The Lord said to say to you, to you, to you. Ah, and I'm just in the middle of, I don't even know what to do. I say, I say, I say, I don't, I send account number in. I don't respond immediately. Because I want to help my heart before I begin to merchandise the anointing. But remember, it's not ministerial. Are you with me? There are some things I might want to say and you need to hear them maturely. Can I ask you a question? What were the two things that Elijah used to survive the anointing or to survive the famine? 
One of them was a, an obedient heart. The other one was the anointing. He was not monetizing it. But the owner of the anointing said, Go to that house, for there you will be fed until it rains. So he walked into the house and there was a scarcity. And the first thing he did was to use the anointing of his life to be a blessing to them. And in response, they were a blessing to him for three and a half years. That's a long time. We don't merchandise it. Are you with me? You didn't see him go and stand in Zarephath and say, okay, if you have empty buckets, just come, just come. Um, Gary Abomeloni Emeta, Aboko Kanti, Uroi Mua, one five new. So as so he be oil. Some of us will have become Gary sellers. That we must produce it. Zile Abi, Amama Ta. The anointing is not just to get spiritual things done, it's to get natural things done. So one of our spiritual sons, I told my wife a few weeks ago, sent a message to me that if you want to give a pastor a gift, first ask him, lest you give him something that is too big for his current um, level and then he can't use it or people feel that God has helped him and all of that, that there are many needs in the ministry. So if you want to give him, ask him, Several speaker because for you know you go and poke a speaker knee, you now put the money as speaker. And I rebuked him. I first saw it on Sylvester's page. I won't tell you who posted it. I said, take that thing down now. We don't serve a God who is only concerned about his work. His minister is also his business. God provides for his work. I'm supposed to give to the work, but God is not intent on making my family go hungry because we are building. We gave a lot as a family during the building of the ark. But my children, my son then was not sent out of school. Are you with me? Because God was providing his kufis. So the Sylvester now, I think now communicated with this and other son. That Papa said we should take this thing down. So he now chatted me up and I said, no, it's wrong, it's wrong. God is concerned about you. He gives for his work. What you must be careful of is that you don't divert it. When he gives to you, be appreciative. Two weeks later, his family comes together and they give him a car. Oh, you can't turn it. He now told me that he and he, every time I go to that city for about a few years, he always comes and gives me money for fuel, for fuel. I didn't know that why he was sowing the money for my fuel was that they were also trusting God for a car. His wife now gave a seed not too long ago for a car. Sold into a minister for transport for a car. So, it meant that their journey of waiting would have continued because of perspective. Thank God they didn't tell him before they brought the car. He said, I've heard your block. I've heard your block. So every time he asks God for a car, the Lord will point his eyes to the blocks. You can't love God more than God. Are you with me? That's why in this house, you must not sow school fees as a seed. The newcomers are hearing it. And for what school she see them be by is robbery because your school fees is, a, is an amount of money that moves from your parents to school. It used to be your parents' money, now it belongs to the school. It's not your money. God does not ask what a man does not have. You don't have your school fees, it's not your money. The Holy Spirit doesn't put people under that kind of pressure. His commandments are not grievous. Are you with me? One few accommodation so seed in this house. We don't need it. I 
our offerings and everything basically just pumps off well in so that you know that there are supernatural means of supply that's what we are riding on it's not what we gather no some people's school fees is, is offering for two Sundays or three Sundays so, to on. so if that's what we are doing it means we have been bankrupt by now and this church does not have business. The last time I checked, except my story of me, I started one. You have church has shop somewhere. I'm selling provision. So ask questions. Lord, how? Every family solution will be unique. That's why the things I want to teach are generic. Anytime you wake up is your morning. That's how I close that. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. So anytime you wake up is your morning. Now catch up mechanisms. Lord, I was supposed to be here three years ago. It means I've lost three years. I think I have a someone like that on time, maybe time manipulation or something. I'm not sure that's the topic, but I think I told maybe on time redemption. I think I preached in um, Redeeming the Time. Was he here or 40? 40. It's the 40 version you should listen to. I did something around time manipulation. I'll give you an example quickly. Come. What's your name again? Bright. Bright. Okay. This is one Bright. The other Bright is on IT, I mean. yes, This is where you're supposed to be. I need another person. Where well, come with So this is how to escape famine. Amen. Come. Mo is here. He's, here. He's representing a family. Mo is supposed to have journeyed to this place. And if he gets here successfully, his family will not feel the famine. Are you with me? But he finds out that he moved from there. But this is where he stopped. Now the famine has happened. There are two things that God can do. There are systems in God to make Moi arrive here without trekking through here. And there are things that God can do to also bring him back here. So that situations are reversed into a place where he can now journey again. Are you with me? Both of them are possible with God. He takes you to the reality or he brings the reality back to you. But you must ask him for what to do. I'll share two things. You can go. A few years ago, I've shared this before. I sat down and the Lord said to me, famine is coming. How do I survive? The Lord said, emphasize tithing. And I can boldly emphasize tithing because I don't spend much money. I understand the priesthood of the Christ and how that this protocol called tithing is captured in the realities of his heavenly priesthood. I've heard people say nobody receives tithe. It's a lie. It's in scripture. He receives it. Are you with me? I've heard people say tithe is kingdom taxation. It's not also true. The foundation for tithing is honor for God. It's acknowledging God within the context of your substance. So Lord, I tithe. But if the seasons are going to be extreme, any new instructions, double your tithe. Now triple it. So I began to do it obediently. But I felt, what are you doing? And then I was on YouTube and I saw a Jewish rabbi teaching something. That the Jews understand the mystery of tithing in more folds. That it is one of God's systems 
of making people escape famine seasons. Are you with me? It's not everybody's instruction. So if you do it, you will not have money to eat. Them. You have to wait on God to speak. Is that all? The Lord said, no. I want you to pick an offering. I'm going to name how much. It's a seed of instruction. So I give it every meeting. It's called an instructed seed. That's the way it starts. If you keep giving it this seed, I drop it in the offering. Most times I just move it to the account. When the soft, when the rough comes, you will not feel it. So I started giving, started giving it. One Sunday now came, and I traveled for a meeting in Lagos. And I, we didn't have extra money. That was all that I had. What I came back with, my lost tight, was the exact amount I was supposed to give. Meanwhile, the instruction is, you give with offering. So I parked my car at Shalom Medical Center that day, and instead of coming to church, I now played with them small because I know that once offering time passes, you don't give offering again. So, so I'm like you. I've been now. Some people too come late. They know we don't have, if you have not given offering after church, give Abi. So you can come late so that I don't give offering. It's good. So I was trying to wind away time, and the Lord said, Ensure that you meet up with offering. I drove almost like a madman to drop the offering, and I felt bad. Huh? So what we now spend? As I came out of church, a brother came and put an envelope in my hand and said, the Lord told me to give it to you. It was the same amount. Same amount. It was not more, it was not less. So what God was doing was making me know, guy, you are secured. Don't be like that. So after a while, the Lord now said, but you are the only one doing this seed. You need to secure the ministry. There's something that winners has unlocked. Finance. Start from your own purpose. Giving offerings to winners. You're going to give it for about three months or so. So Jibala was still going to winners that time. So once Jibala is going to church, he will pass by my house and I'll put an envelope in his hand and he will show it. He will show it. He will show it. He will show it. After a while, I said, Daddy, what? I said, just for this period, it has stopped. And that thing has kept our heavens open as a ministry permanently. It was one of those days after we stopped that seed that the Lord said, build with me. What I'm marketing is unique experiences with God. So I'm not saying go and do the things I'm doing. But God has a word for every one of us. Something that will resonate in faith in your heart. Something that will make it easy for you to do. Remember, his commandments are not grievous. You will likely not need to go and work in a construction company. I mean, carry head pounds or mount scaffolds before you are able to give what he wants you to give. Many times it's not the size. It's the desire to obey him. That's how hard seasons. Obedience may not be of great importance when everything is equal. But when all things are not equal, simple things like trust, obedience, dedication, devotion, sacrificial service, open the door. You know everybody can sacrifice sacrificially. Everybody can. So somebody wakes up and says, I'm not part of sanitation, but I'm going to come every Saturday evening and I'm going to sweep the auditorium. It's a large auditorium. I'm going to bring one of my friends and sweep the auditorium and go away. When you do it, don't ask God for anything. Just sweep and go. We acknowledge you that this is who you are and in response to who you are, we'll do this for you. Just go away. Oh, I'm going to come and just clean the window blinds. I'm just going to come and dust the chairs. You know, do these chairs get dusted? No. Okay, they do. So I'm just going to be part of it. You're not part of us. Don't sweep. Is it your house? It's my father's house. You get it done. You go. Those things become preservers when the, the what do you call them now, when the, the quantities 
you come very well. Lord, I'm going to spend 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 to pray for somebody. I'm going to do it consistent. It become more valuable when it becomes gas. Because everybody has something that can bring them profit in every labor. There's profit. I'll take one more question and I'll peep into my notes. We'll continue on Tuesday anyway, so it's fine. All right, so. All right, sir. I'll take number five. My mom. Why? Why? Okay. You... The fourth one seemed. Okay. My mom kind of gives hope to my faith in times past. And me talking with her the past four months, looking like something has changed. The who was once unbothered by life challenges, especially finances, is now bothered. I was encouraging and she, I was encouraging and the response she was giving me was kind of sarcastic and I became bothered. What can I do in a situation like this? Because I know why she's acting like this. The economy is not smiling and bills are getting more. I know God is faithful. I have seen him display his faithfulness in the past. I want my family to also come into the consciousness of his faithfulness. What can I do to achieve this? Okay, because of time, I'll give a story. Meanwhile, do not demonize your parents if they are like that. Any jaudeba? You heard that? Um, is it is, what is, is it a wise saying? It means until you are face to face with warfare, you will think I'm the man. I'm the man. Even brothers used to car when you attacked. You know that the average young person who has parents has faith, but your faith in God is through your parents. Are you getting me? So you're likely not going to say, Lord, provide for me, amen, and keep living your life. Immediately you finish that prayer. You now call. So if your mom now says, you understand. So it's more like you have, you have responsible systems whose faith may actually give you the experience of God's faithfulness. So it may not be your faith that is working. It may be your parents' faith and their desire to be responsible. Are you with me? So my son says um, that he wants to go on holidays on the beach. That was two days ago. Told his mom. So the mom came to me. And so the mom sent it to me. Mommy said that you will take us to the beach. You see that the request has changed. I said, um, the Lord will provide. We will travel, we'll get to the beach. So when we got back to the car, he now echoed back to his mom. Daddy said, we are going to the beach. <laughs> so when we were alone, I said, pray, 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 pray. That's to my son. He said, Jesus will give you money. He will take me to the beach. So he, he's not saying Jesus will give him money to go to the beach. He's trusting that there's a relationship I have with Jesus that can provide money. And then once Jesus provides me, he sees his cry answered. Are you with me? So sometimes when our parents car, it's not like they don't have faith. If you were in the class of faith, faith comes in different strains. Increase our faith means hitherto we can no longer have faith. Can you give life to your promises so that we'll have faith? We'll be able to hold on. Are you getting my point? So, what do you do, especially when you are a child? Talk may not be good enough. So, I'll bring an example of one of the things that happened around one of my sons, and then we'll close here. So there was one December that um, Ajibola, and I love him so much, I even miss him. How many of you know Ajibola? Ajibola is plenty of things. I think he used to play keyboards much more, more, but he used to drum. He sings very well. I think in Winner's Choir, Ajibola was my replacement when I left. But me, I know that he has a, a more like a pastoral apostolic horn on his head. 
I know that. So when he has done everything he wants to do, maybe we'll work together in the future. Maybe. But I love him. He now called me and said, home is not smiling. The parents were getting by by basically what they had. Meanwhile, there was this salary arrears that if that thing entered the house, it was going to be like God came and sat down. So Christmas was coming and when he arrived at home, his parents were pretty fallen. Nothing's going to happen. So he had prayed and God had assured him that or do ye say, Kuniye. So he told them, and like this situation, it was like gainsaying his utterances, but he was strong in faith. What am I telling this person to do? Go to God and get a promise. The average person who claims to have faith is living by an environmental promise. That um, they say that God provided something for them there. What he has done for one, he can do to all. That's not how faith works. It's the word that journeys to you that activates faith. It comes on a personal level. It might be a public word, but it will deposit personally. Are you with me? We can't teach surviving a famine the Christ way or the Christian way to people who are not willing to pay the price of fellowship with God. I can give you statements on every aspect of our financial life, of our supply experience in that house. Direct statements from God. I can tell you when. Every journey into a new level of ease came by a word from God. Lord, how? When our daughter was going to come, I told my wife, we need extra supplies. There's one sachet of Milo. In the last three years, I bought it for one for nine fifty. I bought it early last year for two eight. Yesterday, I bought for seven one. It's the same sachet. Seven one. There's this conflicts like thing, fruit and fiber. Early last year, I bought for one seven the same thing. Now is seven six. So the shops that have it is there. Everybody just ah, can eat one, well, and then they pass. Even me, I'm not eating it again. Because it must have sense. But I've seen God go from one level of ease to another. And it's always come by a word from God. So I told my wife, we need more finance for two children. We also need wisdom to manage two children. So as not to make one of them feel left out. So let's start praying. And because my wife will not lie, I don't think that an additional baby has strained our supplies in any way. Why? I also know that children are the heritage of the Lord. Foundationally speaking, it means he owns them. You can't send your child to come and stay with me all his life and not give me what I will use to raise the child. So giving back to a child cannot be a burden. The one who owns the child must send the child's money. That's how I hold God. You should start buying pampas. If you don't find that God, you will... You will find out. Ask Pastor Diola. There are close substitutes to Pampas, Pastor Rio, me, so that the world knows you are the one I'm talking about. But I'm saying that those close substitutes are not as hygienic as Pampas. So don't even think about them. You have a God that you have been speaking up about every day, that is your source. You must now make tangible that claim. Some of the things, it may not end as, Lord, you are my source. It may, may be also, what must we do? It may be the way of these animal rearers or some other things. There are many other things that can be done. But ask the Lord, what do you want us to do? 
what is the gate of supply for this baby and when you find it you stay there story closed so Jibala began to pray and every time he met his parents he will assure them now he was building his utterances not on wishful thinking but on a direct word from the Lord that this Christmas will be a big one so the morning of the 24th the parents went to work and when they came back they summoned Jibola and I think his sister to come and offload the back of the car. even the parents were ashamed to tell him that God did it because as they got to work that day that 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 big fund that they were expecting came in on the 24th I would have expected they would have called to say Jibola your God has answered no they first brand the market and so nobody needed to tell anybody, she I told you, she I told you. They just quietly carried the things inside and that was it. Get a word from the Lord and then stay on that word. Stay on that word. Sometimes encouraging people does not work. Some acts of faith are basically between the man who has heard from God and the God that spoke to him. Some people will come to acknowledge God when the results are here. Some people come in late and it's fine. But the man who has a word from God must stay with the word from God. For by it, the elders obtained, obtained a good report. It always works. Amen. All right. So we'll continue next week. Father, we thank you. Lift up your right hand. If there is a word that God has spoken to you, a word that you received before this famine or after, or, or after it began, you want to say to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe. A word for the family, I need a more robust sound. A word for the family, a word for the environment wherein you live, something that communicated preservation something that communicated sustained supply you want to say to Jesus Lord I believe you scripture says for blessed is she that believeth what the blessed is she that believeth for there shall be a performance of what the mount of the Lord has spoken and so Lord I believe Help me sustain my handle on that which you have spoken. That in changing seasons, my heart may operate from the consciousness that the one who spoke is constant. <laughs> ah. We want to spend two more minutes you want to on the strength of what God has said decree that the all the, the atmosphere in the home that you represent shifts what currently advertises as no opportunity it shifts you want to speak favor you want to speak doors open you want to speak that the ministry of help us begin to manifest. Let the relationships that aid, that bring supplies, begin to happen to us. Let those who have a vow to help us, who currently need help, Lord, bring them help speedily. say no to lack my family is open to your abundance the works of our hand you will bless you will give instruction you will give ideas and you will give mind to carry them out little becomes much in this season because you are involved with it I was young and now I'm old but I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is she begging for bread. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. One more prayer point. My brother, that's the prophet, um, Adesoji Adekule, 
was the one that gave me this prayer point three years ago. He said, Reverend, that time, sometimes when God wants to help you, he sends men, like I just established tonight. If the enemy finds out he cannot attack you because of your defense system, he can attack your helpers. And should in case God has decided that what you need to be done will be done by a man. If that man is attacked, it means that by extension you have been attacked. Are you with me? So that somebody wants to bring something to you that you need. In your own area, there's no rain. So you come out and stand at the junction. You now call the guy, ah, I need this thing urgently. The guy says there's rain in my house. Are you wet? Has rain beat you? But you see, the rain that could not stop you from coming out has stopped that person from coming out. It means your lack will be elongated. I hope you know that Israel had a period to be in Egypt. How many years? 400 according to the word of God to Abraham. But you see, the man that was supposed to occasion that deliverance had committed an atrocity and so he had escaped. So 400 years became 430 years and you may not understand what 30 years of slavery means. Especially when it is not within the boundaries of what is allowable by God. It is that your deliverer has escaped. So we need to pray. I want to enter a coil for you, empty and the block line. Abby, they've been saying you should go and register as NIN. He said, No, now you need the guy urgently, and they tell you the line is unreachable. His disobedience to MTN has increased your own suffering. Don't believe those who say, no matter what my helper does, my help will come. God, mm, the earth he has given to the children of men. Somebody's disobedient can derail you. That's why there must be conscious labor in prayer that everyone that is connected to your answers must be aligned. Everyone, do you know that Saul was not designed to be a king in Egypt in Israel? Are you with me? Benjamin was not supposed to taste the throne by the utterances of Jacob. Do you know what who caused it? It was Judah. Judah had sex with his daughter in law. A bastard was born, and according to the law, a bastard cannot be heard. In the assembly of the people of God until the 10th generation. Israel asked for a king in the ninth generation. And God could not produce a king from Judah. So he took one that was tall but had no tact. And he led Israel. Plans can be altered. They will ultimately be fulfilled. You know that they are picked. You see it in movies. The person is sick, they run out to go and look for money. Hello, I don't know why they act those films. So, I'm at the hospital. When they finish treating his wounds and he comes in, he sees that there's a white cloth on the face of the person. Oh, I went there, they said the person has not woken up, and that um, he told me to wait a little. But what we are looking for is time. They said he had Qatar yesterday, so he used them. Um, what's that thing that makes people sleep? Eh? He used pro cold. He want to ask the Lord. As you are praying, pray for yourself too, that you too will be in alignment. So that the answers as required by people will be answered in record time. I decree alignment. We decree that our lives are in alignment with your timings. 
we operate in time to the end that those whose breakthroughs those whose helps depend on us see it occasioned in this stipulated time is someone praying tonight I'm asking of you also that everyone that connects with your agenda in bringing help to us in opening gates for us in establishing us in comfort nothing goes wrong with their lives nothing let our preservation be extended to them let our protection be extended to them none is open to affliction none open to oppression in the name of jesus oh no i want to know me on it yes that have risen for my help be free from affliction be free from distraction be free from diversion or subversion in the natural in the spirit in the name of Jesus I'm sorry I didn't plan this way I want to teach but as I was praying, I felt the Lord inspire me to say, son, it's not just natural. You remember Daniel? How long did he pray? 21 days. Meanwhile, what he was dealing with was subverted answers. It was not even in the human realm. That is possible for somebody to raise a cry in Obomosho. And an angelic mystery is waylaid by the prince of Obomosho. He was a territorial prince that we led him and the man stayed in prayer can you whisper to your neighbor you don't always have 21 days oh Daniel I have come to give you skill and understanding for since the very first day that you prayed John for in that same hour that you prayed heaven sent sometimes the deliverance revival in territories is not far away it's just spiritually subverted wherever the people who are connected to me are in whatever territories they dwell let every subverting spirit come under the judgment of God. We call forth in the name of Jesus. The deployment of backup angels, backup angels, backup angels. You will steer up angelic princes to war to the end that what is ours will arrive. Come on. 
Totalia, Shante Kobabia, you will preserve that which belongs to them. Our answers will come, we will be answers to many. We will not be subverted, they will not be subverted. Together, we will labor to advance your people. prayers for instruction the Lord is saying that there are three individuals in church tonight he has told you how to survive but you don't think the instructions make sense as a young lady amongst them two brothers one young lady what the Lord is saying that you should do is not something you want to be seen around doing the Lord said that's where his provision is. It's nothing sinful. You know he doesn't command like that. So may he put upon you might that will create willingness and gives the, the push to do the things that he wants you to do in the name of Jesus. What Mary said to those, those, those servants was whatever he tells you to do, do it, do it. Do it, do it. Can you whisper to your neighbor, do it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, surviving family. Now I'll rush as fast as possible. 